Canada. Angus Robertson. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Scotland voted overwhelmingly to remain in the yeah. European yeah. Union. Sixty-two percent of voters cast their votes to remain in the EU. Every single local government area in the country voted to remain in the EU. Yep. And in Scotland, we voted to remain because it really matters that we are in the single European market, because we value the free movement of people, of goods and services, because our EU citizenship rights matter, as do our legal safeguards for workers, for women and for parents. In Scotland, Mr Speaker, we voted to remain because we are a European nation. And it really, really matters to us that we live in an outward-looking country, not a diminished little Britain. In Scotland, we are now being told from Westminster that despite the majority against leave, we're going to have to do as we're told. We're going to be taken out of Europe against our will. Mr Speaker, let me tell this House and our friends across Europe, we have no intention whatsoever of seeing Scotland taken out of Europe. That would be totally, totally democratically unacceptable. We are a European country and we will stay a European country. And if that means we have to have an independence referendum to protect Scotland, please, then so be it. Thank goodness, Mr Speaker, that we have a Scottish Government and a First Minister prepared to lead and seek to protect yeah, Scotland's yeah, place. Yeah, and it is yeah, very, yeah. very welcome yeah. that this approach is being supported by opposition political parties across the Scottish Parliament. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mr Speaker, Project Fear has turned to Project Farce. Ah. Uh. Apparently those who propose that we should leave Europe have no plan. Yeah. A senior yeah. Leave MP yeah. said, and I quote, there is no plan. The Leave campaign don't have a post-Brexit plan. They went on to say number 10 should have had a plan. <laughs> Meanwhile, UK share prices are so volatile that some stocks have temporarily been suspended and sterling has hit a 31-year low. Mr Speaker, on one thing I hope we are all agreed, and that is that we take very serious note of the very disturbing series of racist incidents directed against our fellow citizens who happen to come from other European countries. I hope that we all, on all sides, totally repudiate these despicable acts and encourage the police and prosecuting authorities to do all that they can. Mr Speaker, given the economic damage and uncertainty that is currently being caused, may I ask the Prime Minister the following financial questions? We welcome the actions of the Governor of the Bank of England to help provide certainty in difficult times. Can the Prime Minister confirm that the Governor has no plans presently to change his forward guidance on interest rates? The SNP will continue to support any sensible measures to deliver stability and confidence in the UK economy at this time. However, we want to be explicitly clear that this will not be used to further deepen the programme of austerity. Yeah. In conclusion, Mr Speaker, the lack of leadership from Whitehall over the past few days has been unprecedented. Yeah. We recognise that any further drift or vacuum simply exacerbates uncertainty. We know the Prime Minister is planning to leave, and we wish him well, but can we have an absolute assurance that his government will finally start to take a firm grip of the situation we all sadly find ourselves in. Yeah. Well, first of all, what I say to the right gentleman is our focus should be to get the very best deal for the United Kingdom outside the European Union, and that should be the very best deal for Scotland as well. Um, he, I absolutely agree with him about the despicable acts of racism that have taken place, and let me reassure him as well that we'll take every step that we can. He asked questions specifically about interest rates. That is a matter for the Government of the Bank of England and the Monetary Policy Committee, and they set out their views in advance of the referendum. He asked about budgets. That's going to be a matter for a future government. But let me say this to him. Scotland benefits from being in two single markets, the United Kingdom and the European single market. In my view, the best outcome is to try and keep Scotland in both. 